Hi folks, I'm The Lost Mapper, and in this video I'll be showing you how to use PostGIS with QGIS. I'll be showing you an easy way to get PostGIS running on macOS, how to connect to PostGIS from QGIS, how to make your own schemas and tables, and how to import data from files. PostGIS is an extension for the popular relational database PostgreSQL. It adds support for storing, indexing, and querying geographic data. There are a number of reasons why you might want to use PostGIS, but the primary advantage of using a database over files is the fact that multiple people can access, query, and update information in a database at the same time. To get up and running fast, we're going to use an app called Postgres.app, which includes PostGIS. You can download it from PostgresApp.com. While this app provides a great way to start learning PostGIS, it's likely not what you should use for an enterprise level application. So we're gonna head to the Postgres app website. We're gonna head to downloads and we can just grab the latest release, which is also a universal release. So that means it'll run on uh, newer and older Macs. Once that's finished downloading, we can double click the disk image to open it up and we can drag the Postgres app into our applications folder and then head into your applications folder and look for the Postgres app. If you get a warning about it being downloaded from the internet, you can probably just hit open. Once the application starts, you will see a default Postgres server ready to be initialized. So you can just click the initialize button. And once that's done, it will create three, three databases inside of your server. There's one called your name, and there's one called Postgres, and then there's a template one. For this video, we'll be using the database that's named after your username. When this app is running, there'll be a little elephant up in your menu bar, and that lets you know that the application and the server are running. If you close this window, this elephant is still here and the server is still running, so you do not need to leave it up. If you wanna get back to that interface, you can just click on the elephant and choose Open Postgres. Before we can do anything, we need to enable the PostGIS extensions on our database. So we're gonna double click the database named after your username, so in my case, Brian, and that's gonna bring up a PSQL session. PSQL is a command line tool for interacting with a Postgres database. And we can see that we've connected and we're connected to the database named after me. And then we're gonna run a few commands to enable the PostGIS extension on that database. So we'll start off with create schema PostGIS, then create extension PostGIS on that schema. If you're interested in using some of the raster features of PostGIS, you have to enable those separately. So create extension PostGIS raster, and then schema PostGIS. And then finally, we just need to update the path for that database so that it can find those PostGIS tables and functions. So alter database, Brian set the search path to public, which is that default schema that we created and PostGIS. And then to test that out, you can then reconnect to your database with slash C and the name. And then to confirm that it's installed, we can type select PostGIS full version. And that returns some information, letting us know which version of PostGIS is installed. And then you can hit Q to end that, and then type exit to leave the PSQL session. Now that we have a database running with the PostGIS extension installed, we can connect to it from QGIS. So in QJS, you're gonna head over to the browser and right click on the PostgreSQL entry and choose new connection. For the name, you can use whatever you like. I'm going to call this postgres.apps-brian so I can remember that I'm connecting to that app and to that database. Uh, service, you can leave blank. Host should be localhost. Port, you can leave as a default. And then the database will be your username which in my case is Brian. And then I'm going to click test connection and I'm able to connect so I can click okay. 
As I mentioned previously, schemas are a convenient way to organize the tables, views, and other database objects you create. So let's create a dedicated schema for the work we'll be doing today. Over in the browser, underneath my new database connection, I'm going to right click and then choose new schema. And I'm just gonna call this learning. And now that we have a schema, let's also create a table which we can use to hold some point data. So opening up that connection and then right clicking on the schema that we just created called learning, I'm going to choose new table. I'm gonna call that table points and I'm gonna add a field called name of type text. Let's say it's 64 characters. And the geometry is going to be point, and then I can leave the geometry column name as geom and everything else as is, and click OK. And it lets me know that a new table was created. And if I open up that schema, I can see that table. And if I double click on it, it will be added to my project. Once we have that table as a layer in our project, we can add it like we would with any other geo package or shape file. So I'm gonna select that layer. I'm going to toggle editing on, and then I'm going to use the add point feature. Uh, the ID you can leave as is, that's just a special function that'll make sure every ID is unique and incremental. And then we can just give this a name. I'll call this foo and I'll add another one and another one. And then I'm going to save those changes and turn editing off. And if I right click and open up my attribute table, I can see that my entries are there each with a unique and incremental ID. Another thing we can do with PostGIS is import data from other formats, such as shapefiles or GeoJSON or KML, whatever it might be. So let's import one of my favorite layers, which is the US states and territories from weather.gov. So I'm on the National Weather Service website. I'm going to download the US states and territories from March of 2023. So once that download is done, I'm going to see that I have this folder, which has a shapefile inside. I can then head into QJS and go up to the database menu and choose DB Manager. I'm going to open up the PostGIS entry and open up my database and head to the learning schema that we created. I'm then going to choose Import Layer or File and I'm going to navigate to that file that I downloaded. So I'm gonna to head to my downloads and pick this shape file. I'm going to import that into my learning schema. I'm gonna actually rename this to US States and Territories. So this is gonna be the table name inside of my PostGIS schema. And I'm actually gonna enable primary key and geometry column to make sure that those are named ID and geom. And I I'm also going to create a spatial index, just a good practice for the future. And I think everything else, uh, I'm also gonna convert field names to lowercase, just, just a Postgres convention. And then I'm gonna hit okay, and it will ingest that file and create a table. Might take a little bit of time. All right, it lets you know the import is successful. I'm gonna click OK on that. I'm gonna close the DB Manager. And then over in the browser underneath my learning schema, I've got a new table called US States and Territories. I can see the fields in there. And if I double click on that, I can add that to my map. I'm just gonna use the transformation that it suggested. And, oops. There we go. If we zoom to that layer, then we can actually get to it. I guess I made these points off in the middle of nowhere. And I can actually zoom in on this. And if I open up the attribute table, I can see all the data that was brought in. You now have a PostGIS database running on your machine, and you know how to create your own schemas, create your own tables, and import data using QGIS. There are a couple of books that you might want to check out. 
one I've been working my way through and the other I haven't picked up yet. It just came out this month. Uh, the first is PostGIS in Action, which is now in its third edition. And also the one that just came out earlier this month is Spatial SQL, a practical approach to modern GIS using SQL. If you have any questions about what you learned today, feel free to leave a comment below and please subscribe and like if you enjoyed the content. See you next time.